So I'm a computer scientist in, uh, at, and I'm a, I'm a professor in computer science at UC Santa Barbara. And uh, the Smart Farm Project, which I want to tell you a little bit about today, is a project that uh, Professor Rich Wolski and I started back in 2014. And it actually started with Olivier. He participated in a capstone class project uh, effort that I was putting together that uh, brought in industry partners to work with students. And he brought a lot of the ideas that got us, uh, moved us from the cloud computing area to uh, applying, bringing technology to agriculture, which was extremely underserved and still is today, in my opinion. Uh, so I appreciate that. And uh, I've been working closely with Olivier throughout since. Uh, this is an effort that's funded by NSF under a sustainability uh, call that's called CyberSeas. And this was uh, all joint work with uh, agriculture specialists and researchers at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and Fresno State. The ideas uh, that motivated us or that this, is, this project is really uh, targeting is to try to identify technologies in uh, other parts of industry and society that might be useful or might provide the building blocks that can be used uh, to solve some, some prob ma major problems in the ag, to make uh, uh, automation possible, to do uh, uh, actuation and control of on-farm processes. And our approach is to focus on cloud computing and data analytics, uh, a similar background as Olivier talked about. Uh, that Ag Monitor uh, pursues, uh, but also to consider uh, energy use and programming systems um, and, and try to see which of those technologies make sense to apply to systems that are uh, on farm and, and that uh, actuate and control on farm processes and operations. So we focus on how do we bridge the gap between technologies like Google Maps and Amazon.com and Netflix and bring those recommendation systems uh, to fruition to provide growers and ranchers, especially smallholders, with tools that they can use to solve problems and to scale without using more uh, land and resources. And so we look at how do we drive down the cost of sensing? How do we make these systems super easy to use? Because Farmers are focused uh, on, on farming. They don't have a lot of extra time to learn new technologies. So they have to be super easy to integrate and use. How do we preserve privacy? And then how do we integrate with a lot of the technologies that are already in use on farms, in particular sensors and, and, and data that they collect? Uh, our, our key innovation is to do something that different to be disruptive. Uh, most companies or a lot of companies today will uh, have uh, take get, provide sensors on farm for farmers to gather information. And then they use typically cellular connections to broadcast to bring up that data to a, a, a cloud system. And, and so as farmers get more and more sensors, uh, this becomes uh, pretty costly. And also, uh, you know, pushing all that data to the cloud takes time and energy and, and money and bandwidth that uh, kind of make, a, make us consider, well, may, perhaps we can do this differently. Agriculture is different than Netflix and Amazon.com and electronic commerce. It is vast areas that we have to be able to extract information about so that we can provide the farmers with, with the tools that they need. There's already lots of sensors out there, as I mentioned, and some uh, farms aren't fully connected uh, in these large areas and some don't have internet connectivity at all. So we have to be able to reach these growers and ranchers that may not have the state of the art equipment, but we have to be able to help them with technology if we can. Another key issue is that when you have a sensor and you're, you're a bunch of sensors on farm or in your farm implements and you move that all to the cloud, your, your data becomes shared with the vendor that you're sharing it with, the vendor who has provided you, provided you with that, that sensor. And this, this data is an economic advantage. And so the sharing need, that farmers and ranchers need to have control or at least um, some say in who they share their data with and, and how that data is shared um, beyond the farm. 
The other thing that's unique about agriculture, uh, rather than all the other things that we use the cloud for, is that decisions are local. Uh, how much water a farmer here in Santa Barbara, a strawberry farmer is putting on his strawberries has really no impact to a, a cranberry grower in the Northeast. And so what we wanna do is be able to give the farmers tool to make, tools to make local decisions and then share data only as far as necessary to solve problems. So if there's uh, say a pest or a disease that's moving across a, a county, maybe you wanna share data at the county level, but you don't necessarily need to share it across states. So you want to have a real kind of intelligent system for, for data sharing, and that's part of our approach. Uh, uh, our approach takes the cloud and all the building blocks from the recommendation systems that are popular for internet computing and e-commerce and shrinks them down into a usable system that can actually run on farm. So instead of moving all that data to the cloud, what we do instead is we take the cloud, which is code, and that's a lot smaller than the data we're collecting with all these sensors. And we move the code, which is tiny, to the farm. In order to do this, though, we have to run computer systems on farm so that farmers can do all of the um, you know, data analytics or the fusion, bring all their sensors together, get uh, intelligent, actionable insights from their data. That all has to be local. And so we study at UCSB how to do this efficiently. These computer systems have to be an appliance. Uh, that, you know, you've heard of self-driving cars. This is a self-driving computer. Uh, if we can do cars, we can do computers. And so this, this computer is going to be is self-managing. It runs for years without any um, operators. You don't need an IT staff. This is really important for agriculture. But it also feels, and the, it, 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 the way you use it is the same as you use an app on your phone or you interact with Google Maps. It's that, it has to be that simple. And so we look at how do we um, build systems like that to make it look and feel just like you're using a, a, an application that's online that you're comfortable with. We also then consider the machine learning and the artificial intelligence that goes into the recommendation systems that are happening in e-commerce to see which ones are going to make sense to provide recommendations for agriculture operations. We put all of this into uh, this small computer system called an edge cloud, which runs on farm that the sensors interact with locally. And what's nice about this is the data goes only as far as the farmer says they want that data to go. So instead of just automatically moving the, the data, this farmer is in control of that sharing. They can share if they want, they don't have to share, they can share anonymously. Uh, and, and so this gives us a lot more control or gives farmers a lot more control over uh, the, the decisions and the operations that they have. And that's important for their economic, well, economic advantage. I wanted to share with you a couple of the, 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 the sort of the end solutions that we target with the smart farm system. One uh, is really similar or fits right in uh, and is um, uh, uh, similar to what uh, Olivia was saying. It's called, uh, a, 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 it's an analytic system for zone identification. When you have a field, there is a lot of variation. Uh, Baruz Parami asked a question in the Q&A earlier. You know, there's a lot of variance in, in the, the data that we're collecting on the farm in general. These are, you know, vast physical systems, complex systems. You know, how do we, how do we manage this? And, uh, and uh, Olivia showed us how you could use images uh, uh, taken from a satellite data or from drones to, to identify areas on the farm that have similar characteristics. Uh, we did something similar with Smart Farm in that uh, we, there's a really inexpensive way to gather uh, soil properties or, or data that is correlated with soil properties called electro, electrical conductivity. This is a device that you pull behind a tractor so you can continuously, you can repeatedly take measurements and those measurements are correlated with soil properties and soil health. And so what this does is gives you a really inexpensive, fast way to continuously over the course of a season or of a year, multiple times collect data that then our system processes and identifies regions of similarity. Now, Stuart Wolf said earlier that you don't wanna uh, do 
precision application at a tree level, but we are no longer just applying one vast application of an input across an entire field. We can do site-specific management that finds the middle ground of this decision making. You can find areas that, that can be treated similarly so that you only apply the inputs, the water, the pesticide, the fertilizer in the way that soil or that area requires. And then you can, you can have very small areas or very large areas depending on how uh, uh, efficient it is to apply those inputs. Another, uh, uh, system or end solution that we have been pursuing um, has to do with uh, frost protection. Uh, when when there when there's going to be frost, say for, for the citrus industry or the strawberry industry, there's lots of ways of trying to protect against frost. It's a hard freeze which can destroy a crop uh, and do lots of damage, and it's extremely costly. So the one main way of of trying to prevent or protect against frost is to move the air during a hard freeze to keep some warmth in the air so that the, the plants or the fruit don't freeze. And they use very large fans for this to move the air. You can also use irrigation. And, um, but both of these solutions are extremely costly. I've spoken with some farmers where the application of water for a one night frost event, for a, a significant frost event, um, costs and uh, uses as much water as an entire season of growth. For the, from the fans perspective, these are huge polluters. They have huge engines that are driving these fans. And so it costs money for gas. It puts a lot of pollutants into the air. You really don't want to use them until you uh, really have to. But it's really hard to predict when frost is going to occur and to what extreme, what duration it's going to hold. And so you need to understand sort of the topography and sort of the physical characteristics of the farm. And so we've worked on uh, putting together a devising a sensor system that allows us to really uh, identify fine grain uh, uh, microclimates. We call them nanoclimates because they're really small. The, the water features on, the, on a farm or the hills or the, the, the plants themselves play a role in, in, in the, these tiny little microclimates. And so what we're able to do is use a combination of a, a small number of high resolution, very expensive sensors, very small number, with lots and lots of really low cost, low resolution sensors, and then use software that bridges the two so that we can very accurately identify nanoclimates uh, with, with the, at a very low cost with the sensor system with, because of software. And so Smart Farm allows us to really bring down the cost of identifying these nanoclimates so that we can uh, more accurately dial in when to put on water, what duration and where on the farm to put on water or to have to uh, actuate and control these fans. And maybe we can even in the future, we're thinking working with fan companies, which we've started to, to make uh, smaller versions of these so that they are more energy efficient and we can uh, still prevent frost uh, in an economical way. The last one which I'm really excited about is something that we focused on. We're focused on now, uh, so this is you know ongoing work that uh, we're actively engaged in, and this is a uh, more far out, uh, far reaching uh, vision where. Uh, we believe that in the future, for various reasons, that we will be working with uh, controlled agriculture environments. This is where there's some form of structure that is used to protect uh, plants uh, from various things, from the environment, the wind and the sun, from cross-pollination, from pests. Uh, the one that we focused on, you might have heard of urban farming or rooftop farming, vertical farming. These are, you know, very kind of next generation ideas that allow us to experiment with uh, what, what agriculture processes and automation may look like. But we look at something that's more near term. We look at citrus under protective screens. These are screening systems that are... Um, semi-permeable, we call them cups for short. Our team has access to the first uh, production size, four acres, experimental cups in California at Lynn Cove uh, uh, Research and Extension Center. And we are studying cups uh, uh, with, with new growth, new trees for citrus to see, to try to exclude uh, this psyllid, this, this, this pest 
ACP that brings this uh, citrus greening disease, which is a bacteria um, that's called HLB. And this is a, a deadly disease. It's devastated the citrus industry. It's coming to Central Valley of California. And Lots of people are studying it. One way to protect the trees against ACP, the insect vector of HLB to produce HLB free citrus is are these screening systems which keep out, the mesh is small enough that it keeps out the, the insect. So if you have this, which is necessarily an added cost to the farm, what, we asked the question in our research, what are the ways we can, we can leverage these structures to do things that are much more energy efficient, that are much more automated because we have the structure to work, from, work on. So we have you know, heavily instrumented uh, cups, this cup system in, in, at, at Lynn Cove. We are uh, studying how to combine sensing with physical modeling, uh, with machine learning to predict uh, where the different microclimates or the nanoclimates are gonna be under cups, how they're gonna be different than the outside. So therefore what operations need to be changed in order to produce a uh, very, very productive, very um, uh, high quality fruit. We uh, are also studying if you have a structure like this, these models are gonna help us understand how pesticides behave when they're sprayed under these, these, these structures, how they move through the air, how they move through the trees so that we can help uh, 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 specialize and automate pesticide application. So it's extremely precise to reduce the cost of applying pesticides, uh, but also then uh, do it very effectively. So we eliminate the pests that are allowed in to these cup systems. We also uh, are, are working with Steve Dunbar's to understand how we might capture insects that are still under cups or outside of cups trying to get in uh, using interesting lighting and smart traps. Uh, we are uh, also have uh, uh, research that's, that looks at how do we detect breaches as soon as there's a hole, we have to find ways of making sure we exclude the pests that are being kept out. Uh, and breaches happen can happen all the time. You know, you bump into the, you drive a tractor into the to the screen. These this thing, these things are going to happen in real life, and we have to automate the process of detecting, alerting, and and fixing, responding to such actions. And I think uh, one other thing that's kind of exciting is when you have a physical structure and it's actually moving and, and allowing some wind through, that movement um, can be leveraged to harvest electricity for the automation and the robotics that are happening inside. So, so we are looking at all kinds of different platforms for the next generation of controlled agriculture environments here at UCSB. All of our uh, technologies and research are real. We put them in uh, test beds. One thing that Olivier taught me is that you have to show that it works in real life and demonstrate it to farmers if they're gonna use uh, anything that we develop here at UCSB. And so we have taken that to heart and all of our students uh, work out in the field, literally. Uh, this is their cubicle. Um, and lastly, I just want to emphasize that we're doing things differently here uh, at IEE and at UCSB. Computer science and computer engineering research um, in here is unique because it is problem driven and empirical. We work, it is multidisciplinary. We work with the community and with farmers and growers in order to enable our advances. And of course, I can't do any of this without an amazing team of supporters and researchers and students. Uh, and I thank them all, and especially the Institute for Energy Efficiency, and I thank you all for listening. Mm -hmm.